Uh, welcome to another episode of Demystifying Gay Porn Podcast. I'm your host, I.K. Grande. Um, and if you've watched porn in the past 12 years, I've definitely helped you get off. Today, my uh, my special guest is going to be a um, what freelance porn star. Is that what you would call it? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, freelance yeah. porn star, uh, Danny Blue, <laughs> who I happened to meet uh, during a shoot in 2015 in Los Angeles for Dark Alley. Uh, do you want to do you want to describe what that that setup was like? Because yeah, so I got your text or email. Mm-hmm. Like I think we had connected somehow. I don't remember how. Um, and then there was a location. You were mm-hmm. trying to figure out the Airbnb or the hotel or whatever was happening, and you had me meet you on a corner mm-hmm. of Hollywood and La Brea. And it was by a motel and a pizza place, and it felt very shady. And I thought, is that what you mean? You want me to tell yeah, that Yeah, no, story? that's okay. what, well, yeah. It's, <laughs> we kind of had like an off beginning, mm-hmm. and that was four years ago. So the fact that we're still working together is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, I can see how it was shady. I mean, we were driving up. <laughs> yeah, my boyfriend and I were driving up from Las Vegas to L.A. during Labor Day weekend, mm-hmm. actually. <clears throat> and we didn't know what kind of traffic we were going to expect and the shoot was supposed to start, I think, at like seven or something like that, because we gave we gave ourselves enough time uh, to, to drive. But we were in standstill traffic almost the whole time. Mm-hmm. So by the time we got there, you were you were texting away and, you know, this is really shady and blah, blah, blah. And either way, though, we had a good scene. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, it was really yeah, yeah. we had that scene with Mr. Nick. And then we had another scene with Tex Davidson. Yeah. Which people love. Yeah. Tex was really yeah. fun. He's a really sexy guy. Yeah. Tex I have a lot a of friends guy. who are like. I mean, I'm not trying to put myself down, but I have a lot of porn star friends who are really hot, Mm. like better bodies. Like I feel like they're sexier, prettier, nicer face. And it's funny because a lot of them have been hitting me up. They're like, can I have Texas phone number? Mm. Like, can you hook me up with him? And I'm like, girl, I was like, (laughs) go on Twitter. (laughs) Find him on Twitter. Um, So tell us a little bit about your beginning in in porn, because I know that you did porn um, before before we actually spoke. um, The company with now, am I allowed to say who? Yeah, um, with Treasure Island. So, um, I, you know, I kind of, you know, I was at a point in my life where everything was kind of like changing. I was mm-hmm. such a goody goody and a prude, and I didn't really sleep around that much. And um, but then I moved from Iowa to back to California, where I'm originally from, from Los Angeles, and moved to West Hollywood. Of course, it's a completely mm-hmm. different animal than you know where I grew up, and then also you know the, you know, high school years of, you know, Iowa, you know, instilling all the goodness in me. So I was still holding on to that. I was very wet behind the ears. I still wasn't sure exactly what I was doing or where I was going. Um, you know, there's a backstory to all that, but, um, yeah. So I never thought in a million years I'd be doing porn. I, I love sex. Um, at a very young age, I knew what sex was Mm -hmm. way too soon. And, um, I would say that there was this curiosity and, um, so when it finally came time, um, to, I submitted to Treasure Island. I fell in love with Treasure Island because of, I love bareback sex. Mm-hmm. I love cum. I am, you know, a cum addict, if you will. And uh, nothing else. I'm not into anything else. It's like crazy, like fisting and, you know, things like that. DP is probably the farthest I've went. But um, so I thought, God, this would be a really fun place to work for. And there's a, I had a list of guys that I wanted to work with. Oh, okay. Like <laughs> you list. came prepared. Yeah. So when I hit them up, um, then I had a Skype interview with, um, Pony who used to work for them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, then I had to like stand up, show my body. I was so uncomfortable. I was like, what am I doing? Um, uh, and then, so they booked me, they flew me out to San Francisco and literally they had booked me for, I think four or five shoots at that time. Mm-hmm. It's been 12 years since 12, 12 years since I started. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, yeah. Cause I'm trying to remember when I started my I scene think... with treasure Island. 10 2012 maybe 2013 because i remember looking at your i think you you submitted a an application to dark alley yeah and i found you there and i think i found you on twitter too oh, okay um and i remember you saying that you had done porn before and i think it was 2012 2013 yeah. Yeah. what um what would you say well first of all is yeah. is come addiction a diagnosis or is it just it's, something you've self-diagnosed yourself as. Oh, of course. I mean, I'm sure there's not a psychiatrist or a doctor that's going to tell you that. I mean, I would love if doctors would say that. Um, like, how many loads do you take a day? Yeah, like, there should be a, a scale. Of, we're like, a little far from that. I think. <laughs> Maybe in like 30 years. I'm almost. like, I love when people ask me online, like if I'm on BBRT or Twitter, mm-hmm. you know, because my Twitter, well, I just got banned because of a stupid argument I had with some stupid girl. But mm. um, so I had to start over. But I would get 
hundreds of emails, which I couldn't even get to all of them. Just yeah, one I was say, you, you are fresh out of the scene <laughs> with uh, with a fresh load in my butt. Yeah, insanely huge uh, Jamaican boy, which is yeah, a, twelve uh, inches. Yeah, like right? a, it's a Coke can. It has to be about twelve inches. Yeah, that was yeah. Shocking. Yeah. Rough. It was kind of shocking. It was beautiful to watch, though. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. Uh, we got a good scene out of it, and I think it'll be very, very uh, well received. Great. Um, so, okay, so you have your your start in porn from Treasure Island. Mm -hmm. From there, you kind of took a break, right? You did something um, in between. Well, or? I was already. Well, I technically was doing porn before. Um, I was huge on XTube. Um, I okay. was doing like home videos, and um, that's kind of where I started. And but nothing ever showed face. Mm -hmm. um, everything was. Um, very kind of how how do I say it? Um, sort of uh, like a specific type of porn. So mm -hmm. it was like under stall and glory holes and anonymous sort of vibe. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was. I had a huge following because I wanted to make stuff that I couldn't find online. Okay. So I would go out and make that happen on my own. But and how did you how did you come across that yourself? How did you know that you like? understall sex or well glory holes have been around yeah i didn't it just was kinda, it just an experience that you had or? yeah it just kind of happened and i it was weird because one day i was like in the restroom i was taking a piss at, like during my work break mm -hmm. um and i saw some shadow underneath the stall some guy was jacking and i was like what so i finished peeing and i sat down and i got hard instantly mm -hmm. Cause I thought that was kind of fucking hot. It's kind of weird, you know, being in a public restroom mm -hmm. like doing that. But then I had this like very, this interest in like, I want to see what this guy's dick looks like. Mm -hmm. So I took my phone and kind of put it behind. I kind of saw like what was going on. I was like, Holy shit. It's dick is huge. Mm -hmm. Um, so the first few times was like just oral and jack off and that sort of thing. And then I kind of <laughs> started like finding different areas mm -hmm. of, you know, different, places like public places where there's like a glory hole in the toilet dispenser or toilet paper dispenser. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, it was kind of, um, kind of went from there. And then I would hit guys up on, like I'd be on grinder if I was like shopping or something and I was ready to go. I'd be like, Hey, what's up? I'm, you know, over here, you want to meet up? Mm -hmm. And so guys actually would meet me, um, in certain areas, like okay. different public restrooms. Um, I have a list of all of those amazing locations. People would ask me too, like, where do you go? Where is this film? Oh, I'm like, I can't tell you. Yeah, you could have, you could sell a book <laughs> of uh, all your locations. Yes. If these, my, if my walls could talk. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, if people are looking for you, I don't know how active you still are on X2, but if, no, if people I, are looking for you, like what, what handles would they know you by? What's your most watched scene that you've shared on Twitter or something? Well, here's the thing. Um, I've had Twitter, well, now it's gone, but um, the old, the previous one, but mm -hmm. I had some videos that have been watched on Twitter, like up to like 250,000 views. Mm -hmm. um, when I was on Xtube, um, they were pretty high up there as well. They were like 200 to 300 to 400,000. Mm -hmm. um, people have actually um, taken my videos and reposted them. I have not really, I'm not active on Pornhub or mm -hmm. Xtube anymore. Um, Xtube actually changed their layout. That same day, I just delete. I literally deleted my entire account. People were pissed off, but mm -hmm. I was just like, I just didn't like it. I don't like it either. Yeah, I don't like it. it was, they should have kept it the way it was because now everything's like super big and yeah, just, it's, it's a little yeah, it's weird. Fix that X two. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so Pornhub. I lit. It's so funny because you know sometimes you know I don't want to hook up with anyone. I just want to mm -hmm. jack off. So I'm on Pornhub. It's like kind of my go to. I'll type in whatever I'm looking for. You know, cream pie, come dump something whatever um i usually in whenever i my search engine always has cream by cream pie come dump come whore come slut <laughs> something along those lines of whatever do you multiple pop up? cream pie gang gang bang what do you pop up like when you're looking yeah, for yeah a lot material? a lot yeah and i'll see my videos like my glory hole videos mm -hmm. and i'll see mostly all of my home videos are what i see that have now like a million plus i've seen one that was like 1.7 million views mm -hmm. Um, and these people who have taken my videos and posted them on their own site now are probably making tons of money. So yeah, I need, I need a, it's ridiculous the way that happens. Hit them up and sue them or something. <laughs> um, you've worked, so you've worked for a couple of studios. What's your, what's your uh, most favorite studio to work with? I don't want to like, what's it have had? Or, it's not about pissing I off. really it's, loved who's working. Who's treated you well? I, you. Okay. Like, honestly, well, I'm not you. saying okay. that just well, because, but that. you have been so easy to work with. 
you've been super straightforward, super mm. nice. You haven't made me do anything weird and off the wall. Um, well, Trump and dump. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was kind of, that weird. was probably the weirdest thing. That was that. fun. Yeah. Making out we, with a, a yeah, with rubber old, mask. Bill Clinton and that was pretty weird. Obama. And yeah, so that did well in Germany. Did well in Germany. Did well in, uh, that's weird. I'm going to go to Germany and just, like, Oh yeah. People know who you are there. People know who you really? are in, um, what's that other country? We did something in Denmark. Hopefully think, Russia. Somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. That'd be bad. Yeah. It's like, but, um, I'm but, probably on a poster. Don't let this guy into the country. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. I had a lot of fun. It was one of those, uh, conceptual, like as you know, it was as conceptual as it could have been. Yeah. With um, that being said, what was like one of the least favorite experiences that you've had with the studio? Somebody, and I won't say names, um, brought in a bottle of Hershey's chocolate syrup mm. and wanted us to do a scene like it was, um, uh, yeah, it was just like eating your ass out type of thing. And then they <laughs> drizzled chocolate all over and in the butt and all over her chest. And I'm like, okay, this looks like scat. So mm. I'm like, what direction are we really going? Um, really, I haven't had any bad experiences. Um, it's all been pretty good. Um, bottoms come ready. Mm. They had me top a few times. So that's, um, you know, that's hard when, you know, you have to get hard a few times and the bottom has to keep going into the bathroom to make sure that, yeah. you know, everything's good and ready. But, and after, you know, a few times you're just like, you know, that smell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been there. I'm done. I, I get it. So then I ended up being a bottom. So, okay. But, so that was fine. What, uh, speaking of bottoms, who's, <clears throat> you've topped before. Who's, who's been like one of your favorite tops? My you favorite ever? top? Probably Jamaica Boy. Can I name, name a few? Jamaica Boy. Um, I really liked um, Tex, obviously, okay. and uh, Logan Stevens. I actually did my very first like scene with him for yeah. Treasure Island. Yeah. Okay. He had just moved from New York to LA, and um, that it was sexy as fuck. And then he, we rode home together, and we listened to um, uh, Dolly Parton the entire way. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only tape or CD he had in his car. It was really funny. It was well, awesome. At least you're well versed in Dolly Parton. I love Dolly. I saw her front row. Ah, I like her at too. I, I really want to go to Dollywood, actually. Yeah, me too. But I have yet to go. Let's go. I'm yeah. Down. All I'm right. So down. That'd be fun. Yeah. Nice road trip. Yeah. Probably record some stuff happening along uh -huh. the way. That'd be For fun, sure. right? Find some local <laughs> country guys some and local glory holes. <laughs> what was it like growing up in Idaho? Oh, in Iowa? People, I, that's I'm a, sorry, Iowa. People say Idaho, Iowa, or Idaho. Yeah, okay. they, everyone gets really mixed up. So, um, well, when I turned 13, while mm -hmm. I was in, you know, just going into high school, my mother um, broke up with her fiance, and uh, we had family that lived in Iowa at the time. So we went out there. So it was a culture shock. I mean, we literally went from big city LA mm -hmm. to rural Iowa. So it was it was fine because we had went and visited family, so I knew what it was what it was about. We mm -hmm. went in the summertime, super muggy, hot. Um, food was awesome, <laughs> um, but it was boring as hell. But it was fine. Um, education system there is really great. Mm -hmm. um, people are nice. Everyone waves still. Everyone says well, hello. Yeah, I also yeah. it's the first state that votes. The Iowa caucus is so important. Yeah. So it's one of those things where you're like, okay, well, yeah. something must be going on there. Yeah. Um, I've been to Iowa once. I went to Red Oak, Iowa. Is hey, it? over there. <laughs> uh, my sister. Uh, oh, sweet. Does she live there? Jenny Grande, we'll call her. Jenny Grande. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, no, she doesn't live there. One of her roommates from college um, okay. lived there, and we went cross country, mm -hmm. and we stopped there, and it was it was fun. Nice. Yeah. Oh, it's a great, great state. Yeah. I mean, it is well, boring. Whole, the, whole, but the country's beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people should get out there and, and do that, yeah. I think. Um, if you want to move somewhere and like raise your kids in a very nice, calm place with no stress and no traffic and low taxes, probably. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Very cheap drinks at clubs and bars or just bars. I don't know. Yeah. I, out there. I ordered a Long Island iced tea and it was like three bucks. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. And this is like 2005. Yeah. And like, I think a top shelf would have been like maybe eight. Yeah. You know, that's nuts. It's crazy. Yeah. What would be something that you would want, um, your fans and your followers to know about you that they don't know, like something it doesn't have to be like, you know, deep, dark secret oh, or anything no, like that. Yeah. But, um, well, the thing is, is that a lot of people have a misconception of me because I've had fans actually get really upset with me because they think that I'm into, because they, they're like, you're a pig. So you're into all these different things. And then when they find out that I'm not like, I've had one guy 
he really went off on me and was like, well, you sure do show a different side when you're doing porn. I'm like, what are you even talking about? Mm -hmm. like, you know, um, I like dick in my ass and come like, I don't really, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. Did treasure Island do anything weird with me? Like in those videos? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, glory hole. I mean, those are sort of taboo, mm -hmm. I guess in a way, would you say that? Like glory hole sex under cell sex. Well, it's I like, mean, it's yeah. definitely like a, it's fetishy. I think yeah. like you, yeah, you exactly. have to go out and like, that's, that's a specific kind. You yeah. know, it's not vanilla by any means. Yeah. It's that whole public. I might get caught. Yeah. Uh, we're doing stuff. It's anonymous too. Right? Yeah. Technically. No, yeah. Or it can of be. Course, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I've really went from, you know, I used to be so introverted mm -hmm. and so closed off and so scared. And I always, you know, I was always worried what people would say about me or they would judge me. And I was like, kind of, you know, um, you know, just, I didn't want people to really get to know me close. Mm -hmm. It was, I was better on a one, one on one sort of, uh, space mm -hmm. rather than like a group of people. Um, but now that I've done porn, I mean, you're exposed, mm -hmm. everything is out there. Um, my family could find this, um, I don't know if they have or not. Nobody said anything yet. I hope, hope, hopefully if they even do, hopefully they don't text me because I don't want to have that conversation because <laughs> they're all straight conservative Christian, you know, oh my God. Um, but uh, so yeah, it's, um, it's really opened up my mind to a lot of different things because I have seen so much like mm -hmm. with people that they do um, stuff be behind closed doors, the same things mm -hmm. that I'm doing, but they just don't record it. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. Um, you know, people, there's, you know, the stigma with, you know, gay sex and being um, openly, you know, sexual mm -hmm. and wanting to do certain things. Um, and people will judge you even though they do the same thing. Because uh, I've lost a lot of friendships based on, you know, being in porn, mm -hmm. which I'm fine with. It's just, you know, I'm in a different mm -hmm. spot in my life. Um, I'm doing things differently. I'm happy, happier than I've ever been. Um, but it's opened my mind up to so many things. I now I'm able to you know, um, relate to more people mm -hmm. now because of it. And, um, because when you basically you wipe the slate clean and you make yourself so raw and so open and so vulnerable, it really just changes everything. I have to be honest with everyone about what I do. Like I've seen how many likes and how many retweets you get. How does that make you feel? Um, after being so introverted as a kid, it, Nothing. Um, it, the funny thing is, is that probably years ago it would have been like, oh my God, like, mm -hmm. you know, wow, I'm so popular. No, none of that. It just, I'm like, wow, this is cool. Like people actually like it. They're watching it. People are jacking up to these videos. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's what it's there for. Um, you know, I get a lot of emails again. I can't respond to all of them, but um, a lot of people um, will ask questions. How do you stay clean? <laughs> or how do you do shit? I'm like, I can't answer this question. <laughs> so how are um, you always ready? I'm like, I eat lots of fiber. Um, <laughs> <laughs> stay away from gluten. I'm going to just tell everyone now. That's what we should yeah. talk about. Stay away from pizza, rice, <laughs> bread, pasta, tomato sauce, oh, um, geez. It'll go right salsa. There. That's like a pizza. Oh, my God. So <laughs> I love all that food. But so if I know that I'm filming, um, yeah, I, I eat just fruits and veggies and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, so... Uh, what were we talking about? I got lost on my... It's all right. It was basically just what um, oh, what you would want people to know about you. Okay. That Again. you're not a pig 24-7. Uh, I'm not... You know, I need a break. Pigs need a break. Mm. Um, so... And I, I go through different phases. Like, I I like to top guys that are, like, smaller than me, like, mm -hmm. cute bodies and perfect bubble butts. And, you know, I like guys who taught me to be a little bit more, you know, manly or mm -hmm. bigger than me. Not... Maybe... Not more so like domination because I love mm -hmm. all men. Like I love guys that are feminine, um, guys that are in the middle, mm -hmm. and guys that are, that are super masculine. Like I love all of it. So I wouldn't say that I have a specific type. Um, I'm open mm -hmm. to. I love all races. I love all skin colors. I love all accents. <laughs> um, so I really don't discriminate. Uh, but when it comes to sex, um, I think that we all should have that sort of mindset. You know, instead of you know, saying, Oh, I'm only into white guys that are muscly jocks mm -hmm. and hairless. It's like, yeah, they, you know, wax every two weeks. It's like, come on, you know, nobody's that hairless mm -hmm. unless you're like Irish and very white and blonde hair. Is there anything else you'd like to promote? Anything that you'd like where lead fans and new followers and people listening to how they can find you online or 
Yes, my new um, Twitter is Danny Blue XOXO rather than the XXX, which has been banned forever, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm really trying to get it back, but we'll see. Um, so, yeah, I just started it, posted some, some, some of the same videos. I've been super busy, haven't really been able to post a lot. But um, so that's the new one. It's funny um, that I turned it into that because um, a lot of my videos I always put at the end, um, hope you or enjoy XOXO Danny or XO Danny or whatever. Um, so it's kind of fitting in a way. Um, yeah, I don't really, you know, um, yeah, just my Twitter, my just for fans. Mm-hmm. If you want to go follow, that's still Danny Blue XXX. That's linked to my Twitter. Mm-hmm. So if they want to check that out, feel free. Um, thank you so much for subscribing. I need, I'm going to post a video either tonight. You've been watching Demystifying Gay Porn. I am your host, Ike Grande. Demystifying Gay Porn can be found on every podcast directory as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Telegram. If you like what you're watching and want to be a part of the process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn where you can help this YouTube channel and I can continue making content like this. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande. And if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Cheers. Cheers.